Brachial plexus blocks are awesome, but there are times when you just want to block certain nerves of the upper extremity and not the whole limb. And it's very useful to know how to block the median, ulnar, and radial nerves individually. In this video, we'll discuss the relevant anatomy and go over the ultrasound guided technique for each of these. The three principal nerves that innervate the distal extremity are the median, the ulnar, and the radial. And they follow a predictable course past the elbow joint on their way to supplying the hand. If we consider the innervation of the hand and distal forearm, we see that the hand itself is wholly innervated by the median, ulnar, and radial nerves, and this represents a typical innervation pattern. There is variation between individuals, and these territories can shift from person to person. Note that the volar forearm is innervated by the medial and lateral cutaneous nerves, which are branches of the ulnar and musculocutaneous nerves respectively. There are two principal indications for doing these distal blocks. Hand surgery is the main one. One advantage over a brachial plexus block is the patient retains the ability to move their upper extremity, which is a huge satisfier. Also, you can mix and match the individual nerves to suit your specific surgical needs. There is nothing more satisfying than getting a patient through their fifth finger pinning when your entire anesthetic is three mils of bupivacaine on the ulnar nerve. The other use case is for rescue blocks. In the rare event that your brachial plexus block is patchy or if you find that the surgical infiltration just didn't cut it and the patient's in pain in the PACU, these are great ways to provide an instant fix. Okay, so here's the proposition for blocking the median nerve. The median nerve is easily visualized in the mid forearm on the volar aspect. You should be able to identify the radial artery and the median nerve in the fascial plane between the superficial and deep flexor muscles. The radius looks like a ski slope deep to the radial artery. A needle is advanced from the lateral side, either under or over the artery. The goal is to pop into the fascial plane where the nerve lives. Like many fascial plane blocks, this often requires applying firm pressure to get the blunt needle through the tough fascia, so care should be taken not to aim directly at the nerve. Once your needle is in the fascial plane, 3 to 5 mils of local anesthetic is deposited. The ulnar nerve is also easily visualized in the mid forearm. About halfway down the forearm, the ulnar nerve and artery start to separate from each other, and this type of image is what you want to see with some slight separation so the artery is not in the line of fire. We use the same technique here, entering the fascial plane next to the nerve and injecting 3 to 5 mils of local anesthetic. There are different ways to block the radial nerve, but we prefer approaching it just above the elbow crease in order to anesthetize both the superficial and deep branches of the radial. With the patient's elbow flexed to 90 degrees and the hand resting on their abdomen, the probe is placed 2-3 to three centimeters above the elbow crease. You'll be able to see the hyperechoic radial nerve close to the humerus in the fascial plane between the brachialis and brachioradialis muscles. And once again, we bring a needle in from the lateral side and enter the fascial plane where the nerve resides. And once again, 3 to 5 mils of local anesthetic are administered here before the needle is withdrawn. These blocks are easy to do using an out-of-plane approach as well. Just be sure to bring the needle down on the side of the nerve and not to contact it directly. And here are some pointers for distal blocks of the upper extremity. Number one, these are fascial plane blocks, like all blocks are really. A common novice mistake is to deposit the local anesthetic in the muscle next to the nerve and not the true fascial plane. This will result in a poor, slow, or failed block. Number two, remember that the volar wrist and forearm won't be covered by these blocks. They're supplied by the branches of the ulnar and musculocutaneous nerves that have already become subcutaneous at the proximal forearm. If your surgeon is doing work in this area, a quick field block or sub-Q infiltration of local across the volar forearm will effectively and easily anesthetize this area. And finally, we sometimes combine a short-acting brachial plexus block using mepivacaine or lidocaine with a selective distal nerve block using bupivacaine. This gets you optimal operating conditions with an immobile upper limb, while at the same time allowing the patient to be able to move their arm quickly after surgery. The long-lasting distal block provides analgesia for 18 plus hours and ensures a good night's sleep with minimal functional limitation.